to all my fellow geeks, Dante D here bringing you all another video and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. You know, for a long time, I've really wanted to do a video on Bob Kane. And if you're new to comic book collecting and you don't know who Bob Kane is, Bob Kane is a comic book creator who is credited with creating the beloved Batman. So Bob Kane, considered one of the comic book greats, he was also posthumously inducted onto the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But all the things that Bob Kane in his, did in his life, do they really merit all of that hype? Recently, I posted a survey under the YouTube community tab asking viewers if they thought that Bob Kane was to DC what Stan Lee was to Marvel. And I will share those results with you a little later on in the show. But first, I really kind of wanted to talk a little bit about Bob Kane and the type of person he was to answer the question, was Bob Kane a genius or was he a phony? Now, before we get into this discussion, I just wanted to let you all know that this is not a video bashing Bob Kane. I actually have a lot of respect for Bob Kane for having a hand in the creation of my all-time favorite superhero. I just thought this would make for a very interesting discussion. So Bob Kane was born Robert Kahn in 1915 in New York City. And like a lot of comic book creators at the time, he was born to a poor family. Bob Kane, as a child, loved to doodle, and his father worked for a newspaper. One day, his father decided to bring some of his doodles to the newspaper, and uh, a lot of people at work thought that Bob Kane actually had a future in illustration. As a young man, Bob Kane contributed freelance material to Wow, What a Magazine, and he was making $5 a page. Well, one day, he decided that he wanted a raise to $10 a page, which his superiors denied and he moved over to DC Comics and they agreed to give him $10 a page. However, they wanted another superhero type character to replicate the success of Superman. So Bob Kane said, I'll have it for you on Monday, or at least that's what he says. Now here's where things get a little gray. You see, Bob Kane went through his life claiming that he pretty much single-handedly created the Batman. However, Bob Kane's original conceptualization for the Batman is nothing like what he is today. The original Batman was not as dark. He actually wore a little bit of red. Uh, his face was covered with just like a simple mask. It wasn't covered like the uh, the Batman that we know today. It just really was did not look like Batman. As comic book creator Jim Steranko has said, it really was Bill Finger who put Batman on the map and made Batman the hero that we know and love today. Bill was as far as I'm concerned, the guy who put Batman on the map. It's a brilliant, brilliant writer. However, Bob Kane was a better businessman. He was more shrewd than anybody else working in that industry at the time, to the point where Bob Kane pretty much became the overseer of everything that went on in the Batman-related books. There was a time when Bob Kane was not even really actively working on Batman. There were other people writing and drawing Batman stories and he was just kind of overseeing and collecting what Steranko calls agent fees. And agent fees, I guess, at the time were about 10, 15%, but Bob Kane collected a whopping 50%. 50%, 50 if you wanna work on my Batman book, 50%. You get to like this guy even more? The other thing that I found a little bit interesting about Bob Kane was that he actually managed to obtain some rights to the Batman character. Somehow, and I'm not exactly sure how, Kane got them to sign a contract whereby he got a piece of everything. Which, if you know a little bit about comic book history, you know at the time was very, very difficult to do. The greatest story of comic book creators getting screwed over their characters. I mean, is Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster, the creators of Superman. I mean, they didn't have any of the rights for Superman and to the point where they got up to the 70s and they were poor because they were getting nothing from the Superman character that they created. But that I think is a topic for another video. So I'm sure by now you're starting to see what type of person Bob Kane was. And there are probably some of you out there that are saying, well, hey, business is business and he was the better businessman, so good for him. But was Bob Kane really all that he was cut out to be as a comic book creator and artist? Now, I do not personally know Bob Kane or his family, and I've never met the man. 
He passed away back in 1998, back when I was about 10 years old. So I'm going to be forming my opinion mostly based on what I've read, interviews, and what other comic book creators have had to say about him. So today I'm going to be using Stan Lee to help me answer the question of whether or not Bob Kane is all that he is cut out to be. So I'm putting Stan Lee and Bob Kane in the ring. Now there are probably some of you out there thinking that this is really an unfair matchup. Stan Lee is much, much more accomplished than Bob Kane, but is he really? I mean, Bob Kane still did have a hand in creating one of the most popular superheroes on the planet. So I, I really do think this is this is a, a fair matchup. And, you know, Stan Lee and Bob Kane were also in the same age range, even though Bob Kane is just slightly older. So now with these two big names in the ring, let's see who will win and let us see if this matchup can help us answer the question of whether or not Bob Kane is really worth all the hype. There was a great series from the early 90s called The Comic Book Greats, which was hosted by Stan Lee, in which he interviewed many of the biggest names in the comic book industry. And at the time, Stan Lee did an interview with Bob Kane. And I just think this footage here from the Bob Kane interview is just priceless. And it really shows a lot and reveals a lot about the type of person and the type of creator that Bob Kane was. So right off the bat, you'll notice that Bob Kane is a cocky son of a gun. And he really puts himself up on a pedestal. And what's even funnier is that Stan Lee feeds his ego and puts him on a pedestal even more, but he kind of does it in a joking way to kind of make fun of Bob Kane. And I don't know if Bob Kane is always aware of that. Okay. Bob, for the few people who come from another planet who may not know what you do, what is it that you're known for? You gotta be kidding. You you're rich, you're famous. Today. <laughs> you're almost as famous as Bob Kane. <laughs> it must be why Leonardo da Vinci and Bob Kane are almost always mentioned in the same breath. Have you noticed that? <laughs> in this interview, you're going to see that Bob Kane makes little to no mention of Bill Finger as a co-creator of Batman. You can see he's taking all of the credit for himself. And I went home, and lo and behold, I thought about all my childhood heroes when I was a kid in my world of fantasy, such as Zorro, Douglas Fairbanks yeah, Sr. Yeah. So the three influences at that time were Zorro, Leonardo da Vinci, and the Bat. And on Monday, I came up with a very crude drawing of Batman, and I showed it to Whitney Ellsworth, and he said, that's terrific. And but the rest is history, then Batman Batman, was it, it seemed to take off at that time. Now Even though Bob Kane does not make a lot of mention of Bill Finger in this interview, at least Bill Finger avoids becoming Bob Kane's punching bag. That privilege goes to Jerry Robinson. And if you're not sure who Jerry Robinson is, uh, he also was a comic book creator, and it's very debatable on who created the Joker, but I firmly believe that Jerry Robinson had a huge hand in the crea creation of the Joker, and he should be considered a co-creator. Bob Kane certainly did not create the Joker all on his own, even though he claims that he did. I had a ghost artist, which I'd like to refute now. His claim to fame is that he created the Joker, Jerry Robinson. Jerry Robinson, to his dying day, will say he created, and look, here's my answer to him. Had Jerry come to me first with the Joker playing card, the Batman, the Joker would have looked like this, and not like this. So apparently I was first and he well, came second. Well, since this isn't the court of law, the I rest my case. I if there's one thing that I learned about Bob Kane from watching this interview, it's that you never ever ask him about Jerry Robinson. And even if you don't ask him about Jerry Robinson, he probably still will bring up the fact that Jerry Robinson has no right to claim that he had any hand in the creation of the Joker Bob Kane is the only one who created the Joker. Jerry Robinson had nothing to do with it. He's really funny. Stan Lee, at this point, tries to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bob Kane and kind of defend Jerry a little bit. And Bob Kane even says, you're defending Jerry. But Stan Lee at that point is like, oh no, I, I went there and I need to get out of this really fast. He, it's so funny. He tries to get off the topic of Jerry Robinson. Stan Lee even says, okay, at this point now, I'm just trying to defend myself. <laughs> Jerry also is a very dear friend of mine and a fine artist. Glad he's a you friend know, of yours. And we'll probably do an interview with no Jerry. No friend too. of yours is a friend of mine. <laughs> that goes but, automatically, um, particularly Jerry Robinson. But whoever created it, 
the point no, is... No, no, I just proved my case that Bill Finger came to me with the photograph, not whoever, Bob Kane and okay. Bill Finger created the Joker. Now, what I mean is... We have definite proof, conclusive proof in my book. Yeah. I am so sorry I asked you to you show that, that drawing. My... What? What I'm trying to say you're is... You're cupping that, out, Stan. You're protecting Jerry now. No, I'm not protecting anybody. I don't mind that. I'm protecting myself. He's a nice guy despite himself. Jerry was a nice guy despite himself? Ouch. Later on in the interview, Bob Kane brings up the Jerry Robinson topic yet again. And this time, Stan Lee tries to desperately kibosh it. So, Jerry, if you're looking... Bob, do you remember, says Stan, not to change the subject? <laughs> not to change the subject? No, you totally intended to change the subject, Stan, and I really do not blame you. He's like, we need to get off this topic right now. The Jerry Robinson discussion really kind of put a bad taste in my mouth for Bob Kane, uh, but it really wasn't until the discussion of how artists should portray the Batman that really kind of revealed to me what type of person Bob Kane likely was, even though I don't personally know him. At one point in the interview, Bob Kane expressed his displeasure with how artists after him portrayed the Batman. He pretty much said that all artists should be drawing Batman like Bob Kane, and they should not put their original spin on Batman, which I think is absolutely ludicrous. Stan Lee even politely tells Bob Kane that, no, artists all have different styles, and the only way that an artist can be the best artist he can be is to draw it in his own in his own way, his own, his own style, right? And along the way, a lot of artists came along to do Batman, and it became their artwork and not mine. Why didn't they ghost my style? Because my style was so unique, they couldn't copy it. Now, what happens then is they, they, they change it into their own style, and it changes the original, originator's style. I think what happens is, if an artist draws in the style of another artist, of the man who originated the strip, let's yeah. say, he's not drawing his best. It's not the best he can draw. He's, well, you know this, Bob. You've got to draw in your own style for it to be the best Bob Kane it can be. So what they do is they base the drawing on what the original artist created. And then and they then change they, it into their own personality. They, they have to, or else it won't be good. Um, I it, disagree it, with that. Well, Bob Kane firmly disagreed with that and pretty much reaffirmed that, nope, I created Batman, and all Batmans should look like Bob Kane's Batman. Now, yes, what Bob Kane is saying probably sounds absolutely ridiculous to somebody like me, but I don't really have business sense. I don't have business mentality. So when I took a step back, I, I realized that of course Bob Kane would be saying this because Bob Kane and Stan Lee, they both had very, very different approaches to comics. Now, Stan Lee, yeah, you can consider him a pretty good businessman, but he approached comics from an artistic and quality type perspective with a little bit of business added to it. Bob Kane was literally all business. So he thought the Bob Kane Batman is the character that really struck success and really became successful so in order to continue that success all of the batmans need to look like the bob kane batman and stan lee of course would disagree because he knows that in art in order for an artist to really be appreciated they have to have their own style they can't just be replicating another artist's style if all issues of Spider-Man were drawn like Steve Ditko's Spider-Man from the 1960s all the way to present day, I think that would actually be bad for business and people would actually get bored and stop reading Spider-Man. It's all of the unique representations of Spider-Man that people absolutely loved. And if it wasn't for all of these new styles being added to Spider-Man, we would never have something as cool as say, Todd McFarlane's spaghetti webbing. And the very same thing could be said for Batman. I think definitely people would get totally bored if everybody drew Batman like Bob Kane. And it was at this point in the interview that I realized that all Stan Lee has been doing throughout this whole interview is trying to keep Bob Kane's ego at bay, which I think would be very, very difficult. And Stan Lee, on many occasions has said that Bob Kane was a friend of his. I can't even imagine hanging out with someone like Bob Kane who has to constantly validate himself. And Stan Lee even used to go out for dinner with him and this is what he had to say about his dinner experiences with Bob Kane. He would go to a restaurant with me, we'd have dinner. 
minute the waiter came over. Do you know who I am? I'm Bob Kane. I created Batman. Here, I'll draw you a picture. I wanted to crawl under the table. <laughs> I would never say anything like that. <laughs> I can't believe that, really. And then, of course, Stan Lee had to, just for fun, ask Bob Kane to draw a picture of Spider-Man. You want me to draw a character like Spider-Man? I don't know why I'd waste my time drawing a character like Spider-Man when I could draw the Batman. But since you asked, I'll draw Spider-Man better than Ditko. Out like the radiation. Why don't, why don't, you, why don't you draw it? No, because I'm not the guest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It... And you'd complain. You'd say, oh, Stan. What the heck is this? You are an artist? and you're drawing Spider-Man like that, I'm not even an artist and I think I could draw a better Spider-Man than that. As a matter of fact, I'm sure all of you non-artists out there who are watching can probably draw a better Spider-Man than that. And I'd really like to see your Spider-Mans that are better than Bob Kane. So I'm going to start a discussion on the community tab as soon as this video is posted. And I want you to draw a picture of your best Spider-Man and post it in the discussion. So before we get to our verdict and we talk about who wins in the ring between Stan Lee and Bob Kane, and if Bob Kane is really worth all the hype, here are some other douchey things that Bob Kane said throughout this interview. I love to do women. I know you, know you this. relish that, huh? <laughs> yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer, and she's really a pussycat. You hear what the rumor is? What is she the rumor? hopes to get a drawing of her by Bob Kane. Well, listen, I'd like to give her more than a drawing. <laughs> what can I tell you? I don't know what you can tell me, but I hope you won't. <laughs> <laughs> Not on camera anyways. But stuff to come out of it, it isn't that easy, right? Well, when you're a genius, it's easy. H-I-J-K-L. <laughs> K comes before Lee, Kane. I precede you there. But R-S, Robert before Stan, R-S. Bob, you're an oh, I think I, you. I think you just I, I went off have, the page. Do I get paid okay. for this interview today? Uh, you didn't varnish the table for my <laughs> appearance today. Come on. Do I get paid today? You know, that is a sentence that you are not loath to throw around. Jack won't bother with you. I told him about Stan Lee. He said, who? Yeah. And the reason I can draw and other people can't is I visualize it. My, my mind's eye is the projector. So between Stan Lee and Bob Kane, I think in the ring, figuratively speaking anyway, I think Stan Lee wins as the better comic book creator. Even though Stan Lee is a writer and Bob Kane is an artist, and kind of writer too, I guess. I, I honestly think that Stan Lee is was just a better creator and a, and a better person overall. You see, Stan Lee did so much work to promote the characters in the Marvel Universe as a whole. It didn't matter if he created the characters or not. He was Marvel's biggest advocate. And he was not only a huge advocate for Marvel Comics, he was also a huge advocate for the comic book industry in general, I think if Bob Kane were doing a series on the comic book greats, he'd probably just do a 10 episode series about himself. He would not be interviewing any DC creators that were awesome. And he certainly would not be interviewing any Marvel. And I know there's been a little bit of creator drama with Stan Lee and his co-creators over the years. However, I think it's really says something about Stan Lee that he went throughout his life saying that he was a co-creator of many of the beloved characters in the Marvel Universe. Bob Kane never referred to himself as a co-creator, even though he technically was a co-creator. He never gave any credit to anybody else except for himself. So let's answer the question, was Bob Kane a genius or was he a phony? I think the answer to that question is he was neither. Even though Bob Kane would consider himself a genius, I certainly would not consider him that because he did not think of the Batman character all on his own. Everything about Batman that we know and love today was pretty much came from contributions from other creators like Bill Finger, Jerry Robinson, so on and so forth. And I definitely would not consider Bob Kane a phony because at the end of the day, whether you liked Bob Kane or not, he was still a very accomplished man and he was a very, very shrewd businessman. And as probably some of you know out there, the best businessmen do not usually make friends that easily. So now I'd like to talk about the results of the poll that I talked about a little earlier. So under the community tab for this channel, I asked viewers if they thought that Bob Kane was to DC what Stan Lee was to Marvel. A couple hundred people voted and 10% voted yes, 58% voted no, and 31% voted don't know. So what this poll tells me is that 
The vast majority of comic book fans do not appear to be fooled by Bob Kane's shenanigans. For the 31% that voted don't know, I really hope that this video provided you with enough information to form an opinion about Bob Kane. And for those of you that voted yes, I really hope that the information in this video allowed you to learn something new about Bob Kane. So what do you all think about Bob Kane? I would love to hear from you in the comments. Do you think he deserves as much praise as someone like Stan Lee, or do you think that he's a little overhyped? Also, if you've personally met Bob Kane in your life, I would love, really love to hear from you because I would like to know what he was like on, on a personal basis. I mean, because you know, I, you only could judge so much from, from interviews, right? So that about does it for a video today. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you liked this video, leave a like. If you disliked it, leave a dislike. Please consider subscribing and check out the channel for other videos on topics related to geek culture. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.